Previously in Fenero. Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 30. The Bible says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is the person of God. He's, he's a person. For the first time when I had an encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit, I understood what finally God meant when he said he loved me. Because you see, they can tell you, ah, God loves you. But until you experience this love, you can never understand. And then as I continue to fellowship with God through the Holy Spirit, I start to realize that the person of the Holy Spirit was a person. He had a nature. He had attributes. He had a way he thinks. He had a heart. A way he functioned. He was like a person. He was not just that innate power that simply is existent to execute the will and purposes of God on earth without any attachment to us. I started to realize that he had feelings too. He had a deliberation to build a relationship like you will want a relationship too. He enjoyed love like you do. He enjoyed to speak and fellowship like you do. He is the sweetest person you could ever know. He's, I mean, this goes beyond words that we can articulate. You have to experience him yourself to understand. The time comes when everybody must have an experience with him. God wants to build a relationship with you that even goes beyond the gift operating on your life to the assignment and mandate, his definitive purpose of a generation. Now, when Ephesians 4.30 tells you, grieve not the Holy Spirit, it means he can grieve. Paul is talking to believers here. There is a very common scripture that I've heard confusing so much among men. Mark 3.28 where Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, All sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, he hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. And I've had experiences where people have asked me, What is blasphemy against the Spirit? Maybe in my life I've committed the sin of blasphemy of unforgiveness where with God can never forgive me. So then why am I even wasting my time in salvation? Now, if you'll continue in the next verse 30, Jesus says, because they said he has an unclean spirit. It's not possible for a believer to commit the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. You cannot be a believer and then say that Jesus has an unclean spirit. That is not for a believer. What is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? To set yourself an irreconcilable to God. So, no believer should ever worry about the sin against the Holy Spirit. But, with believers, there are things that are done that grieve the Spirit. When you set yourself to speak words that are corrupt, they grieve the person of the Holy Spirit. Because his communication is a ministry of grace and it seeks to the edification and not destruction of men. In Acts 7.51, when Stephanus is about to die, he asks them a question. He says, Ye stiff naked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. What does he mean by stiff naked? Stiff nakedness is a place where you are so glued to one opinion of God that you can't open your heart to see the possibility of another opinion. There are people who resist the order of the Spirit. For example, the, the scripture says, he that resisteth the powers resisteth God for all powers are ordained of God. You can resist the Spirit by resisting those anointed by God. Now, even in the most practical sense, sometimes it even goes beyond the spiritual obvious things. The laws of the land, these are powers ordained by God. It takes you to even the smallest thing that, for example, if you cross a traffic light when it is red, do small things. Why haven't you laid your bed? Because God doesn't like dirty places. Hello? Imagine you're a Christian and you're trashing. He is concerned with even the brushing of your shoe. Because you're the light of the world. He wants you to look a certain way. He wants you to appear a certain way. When you become born again, 
you become a light you become an example you can never be convicted beyond principle if the word has told you the principle of forgiveness is even as I have loved you how can you carry unforgiveness how if the Bible says if a brother wrongs you go to them how can you skip them and go to another person and report that and think that because your heart you're right and many as on suffering the Bible says they lied to the person of the Holy Spirit were they in the grace dispensation yes in Thessalonians 5.19 he speaks of quenching the spirit quenching is interrupting the operation I'll give an example if someone is speaking in tongues then you tell them stop speaking in tongues that's quenching because the Bible says they speak in tongues as the spirit gives them utterance now if somebody is praying by the spirit how can you tell them stop when God helps you to be sensitive to the slightest nudge of the spirit when it's just off the course of divine purpose you're a blessed man, you're a blessed woman because you save too much you know the conversations to walk out of you know the conversations to have you know the people to relate with you know the relationships to end you know the buildings you should enter you know the buildings you should walk out you know the vehicles you should go into there are things that get so natural about you even at the slightest failure of self to do what is pleasing to the holy spirit there is something that catches you to change your mind and say holy spirit this is not my way because you have not ordained and anointed me to walk this way because he's so gentle that you could miss him he speaks in a very gentle way that you could miss him he's never imposing no he's ever inviting even in his invitations there is just the simplest spelling of love it's just love you feel that he's drawing you with love you see that he's true he's faithful he's here he's for you he's never against you all we have in this walk definitively is the Holy Spirit his person and the relationship that we have with him that constant life of ever living to have the joy of the Spirit with you because the joy of the Spirit defines your liberties and your liberties define access and your access are the windows of the Spirit if the windows of the Spirit lock up the doors of utterance are frustrated because you'll not be able to give as you ought some windows don't come to give you mystery. Some windows come to star. It's the progression of oil in every dispensation. Because God is entrusting you with a message, with a responsibility for the generation that you're in. But you should never lose your relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that one revelation can change your story? One like this. One experience with the Holy Spirit can change your ministry. One experience with the Holy Spirit can change your marriage, can change your business, can change your child, can get that incurable disease out of your body. One experience. Those are the things that keep you relevant. Listen, even if they told you you have stage 4 cancer and your windows are open, you can't worry. Because you know, you still have things to do and God cannot let you die with such a deposit. Because every entrance through these windows gives us what to do. It's the guarantee for my next week, next year. The thing that I'm ever confident about will continue to flow for as long as I'm alive because the windows have to stay open. And that can come through revelation, through ideas, through wisdom, through understanding. The next best thing going to happen on the face of the earth is going to come out of somebody. That is why we keep the Holy Spirit with a certain relationship. This sermon is now available on DVD and CD at Fenero Sales Table and Andrew Womack Bookshop.